Hello televiewers, especially kids and parents. Welcome to Ag Amazing TV. I am Sir Jessica Sman and I will be your teacher in Science 4. Are you ready to explore the enchanting world of science? Now, let's go! Hello kids, Sir Jess here. For today's lesson, we will discuss the interactions among living things in their environment. In this lesson, you will learn or describe some types of beneficial and harmful interactions among living things. Living things interact in the environment based on their functions and roles. In the previous episode, you learned about how organisms relate to another and how abiotic components control their relationships. Interaction among organisms may either harmful or beneficial depending on the effect of one to another. Let us discuss first the symbiosis or it is called the interdependence of living organisms. Organisms living together in an ecosystem depend upon one another in order to survive. They interact in a number of ways to enable them to require food, shelter, protection, support, and transportation. Mutualism is the relationship in which both organisms are benefited such that they become mutually dependent upon each other. For example, a bird on a carabao's back Butterflies and bees generally like to eat sweet juice or nectar on flowers, while flowers as reproductive organs in plants are helped because these beautiful insects help spread pollen. This is an example of mutualism relationship between the flower and the bees or butterflies. Here's another example. This is an mutualism. Another example we have the heron at the back of the carabao feeds on the ticks that suck the blood of the carabao. The heron gets food by eating the ticks. At the same time, the carabao gets cleaning on its parasites. Plants give off oxygen needed by animals, while animals exhale carbon dioxide needed by plants. And also, plants are the main producers for animals and also in human. Second, we have the commensalism. A relationship in which one organism is benefited but the other is not harmed. Ramona fish have a disc on their heads that makes them able to attach larger animals such as sharks, mantas, and whales. When the larger animal feeds the remora that attaches itself 
to eat the extra food. This is an example of commensalism relationship. Here's another example. The symbiotic relationship between the anemone or the sea anemone and the clownfish is a classic example of two organisms benefiting the other. The anemone provides the clownfish with the protection and shelter, while the clownfish provides the anemone nutrients in the form of waste. Here's another example of commensalism. Many frogs, like the poison dart frog and the body leaf frog in the rainforest through the world show commensalism because of its poison. Another let us focus on parasitism. It is a relationship in which the parasite is benefited, but the host may be harmed or get diseased. This is an example of parasitic relationship. The mosquitoes rely on humans for food. This relationship between the human and the mosquito would be considered parasitism because the human or host is affected ne negatively and the mosquito and or the parasites benefits from the relationship. The mosquito gets food. But on the other hand, the human is exposed to many diseases. This is an example of parasitism or parasites. Let us now focus on the cooperation. It refers to some interactions of the same kind of organisms that is beneficially the organisms. However, do not become dependent on one another. For example, the colonies of ants. Depending on the species, ant colonies can consist of millions of ants. There are three kinds of ants in the colony. The queen, the female workers and the males. The queen and the males have wings, while the workers don't have wings. The queen is the only ant that can lay eggs. Some animals are helping each other in finding food in the forest. This is one of the example of cooperation. Let us now focus on the competition. It occurs when both organisms having the same needs live in the same area. The competition is the interspecific when the organisms are of different species. It is intra-specific if the organisms are of the same species. The, competi the competition occurs naturally between the living organisms that coexist in the same environment. For example, the animals may compete for territory water, food, or meats. Competition often occurs 
between members of the same species. This is called the intraspecific competition. Let us now focus on the predation. It is a relationship between the predator and its prey. The predator enjoys the prey. Predation is a biological interaction where one organism, the predator, kills and eats another organism or its prey. It is one of the family of common feeding behaviors that includes parasitism and micropredation, which usually do not kill the host, and parasitoidism, which always does eventually. It is distinct from scavenging on death on prey, though. Many predators also scavenge. It overlaps with herbivory as seed predation and destructive. Rigorous are predators. Predators may actively search or pursue prey or wait for it, often concealed. When prey is detected, the predator assesses whether to attack it. Predators are adapted and often highly specialized for hunting with acute senses such as vision, hearing, or smell. Many predators or animals both vertebrate and invertebrate have sharp claws or jaws to grip, kill, and cut up their prey. Other adaptations include stealth and aggressive mimicry that improve hunting efficiency. Let us now have an activity. Direction. Describe the symbiosis of animals. You are going to write the M for mutualism. If the symbiotic relationship that benefits both organisms involved. C for commensalism. A symbiotic relationship that benefits one organisms and the other is not health or harm. B. Parasitism. A symbiotic relationship that benefits one organisms and the other is harm. Number one, we have the clownfish and the sea anemone. Number two, we have a tick living on the dog. Number three, we have head lies living on the human skull. Four, the ants protecting the acacia tree, and the tree provides food for the ants. Five, a whale and the barnacles. I will give you ten seconds to answer. Okay, let us check your work. For number one, we have C. Commensalism, the clownfish and the sea anemone. Number two, we have A tick living on the dog is P. Parasitism. Three, 
headlines living on the human scalp, we have parasitic stains. Four, the ants protecting the acacia tree and tree provides food for the ant. Mutualism. And four, five, the whale and the barnacles. C. Commensalism. Very good. you were able to get an amazing score. That ends my discussion. I hope that you will learn something today. Again, this is Sir Jessica's man saying, be an explorer, be a discoverer, be an amazing you. This is Agamazing TV.